Morning, guys. Welcome to Coffee Chat. Mmm. Wow, absolutely fabulous, fabulous. It's Friday, and of course, Friday means it's the weekends, and the weekends are for friends and family, and of course, I sure hope that you're gonna have a fantastic weekend this weekend. It seems to be gearing up. It feels like it's gonna be a great, great weekend. Some things that are going on in the world, though, amazingly enough, I'm reading an article this morning, and this is coming out of the BRICS countries. They are in the process of developing a brand new currency and one that is gonna be equivalent among all these BRICS nations. So you got Brazil, Russia, India, China, and I think it's South, South Africa or something like that. But needless to say, you've got all these BRICS nations that are coming together. And of course, remember guys, Saudi Arabia has now applied, you know, for the BRIC, for status within the BRICS countries. And there's other countries out there that have also applied. And what they're looking at is developing their own currency. Now, this one they're saying is going to be backed by some form of gold or other commodity or something like that. But I'm telling you, what we're seeing here is a full on assault against the U.S. reserve currency status. It is big, and I think we're losing it, and we're going to lose it soon. Hmm. Now, when that happens, I'm telling you, all those dollars that the Federal Reserve has pumped out to the rest of the world for demand are going to come flooding back in, and the U.S. dollar will suffer such hyperinflation that it has never, ever seen before, should that actually take place. But you are definitely seeing an assault on the, on the, on the financial system that's been in play for so long. Now you're seeing it in a big, big way. And I believe that we'll probably see that. And no doubt, it's going to be a digital currency as well. And we can see the, the switches are being absolutely flipped. Now, having said that, interestingly enough, in Australia, you're watching a number of banks literally getting rid of cash. ANZ has made it so that you can't actually, you know, get deposits or sorry, withdrawals out of the bank in when you go into the branch and they are actually only allowing it through ATMs and the ATM system that they have, they're literally absolutely, they're literally pulling them out of the walls and only a few are gonna be around. They're getting rid of them. They're lowering the number of the ATMs. So, hey, what does that help prevent? Well, guys, doesn't that help prevent a run on the bank when there's no cash in any of the branches? <laughs> you guessed it. What do you think they're planning for? And then on top of that, the People's Choice Bank of Australia is doing a whole bunch of changes as well right now. And it just seems like there are different places around the world that are getting ready and doing all this. Now, having said that, mm, in my home country of Canada, I'm getting lots of reports from people that, hey, they're not having access to their accounts the way that they want it. And in fact, one report came out that people that are banking with the Toronto Dominion Bank at this point have been actually sent some sort of a reverse acquiescence letter, basically saying, hey, if they don't if they don't respond by such and such a date with respect to this letter, then they will have consented to agree to a digital ID system. Now, if they don't consent to the digital ID system, then they can no longer use their bank cards. They can no longer access online banking, on and on and on. So this is a form of getting people into this digital ID system in a way in which they will absolutely have to comply Otherwise, they're almost shut out of what normal banking... Can you imagine right now not having to be able to use online banking or not having access to a bank machine or using your bank card to make purchases and not having one? And the only way that you could actually access your accounts was to go into a bank and get what? Cash, which they're actually getting rid of? Guys, I'm telling you what, they don't have to make laws to force you into these compliance situations. They just have to, you know, change the way the system works. And you're either going to follow suit or you're going to be left behind. That's how they're going to do it. And think of this too. Mm. With all these 15-minute cities and all this kind of stuff like that, 
they don't have to actually make laws to restrict your liberty or freedom. They just have to be able to tax you whenever you drive out and da 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 da. Just put some sort of, you know, transportation tax in there. Make it exorbitantly high. Make it so that the average person can't really pay that tax or is going to be highly incentivized not to do it because the fee is going to be so high, it's only going to be on special occasions that they might do it. And think of this, depending on the distance that you travel. You know, let's say you're wanting to drive, you know, 500 miles or something like that. Well, what if the the tax that they impose, you know, like the cameras that they have on toll roads and they can get you this way? What if the tax, they, every 100 miles, they charge you another fee? I'm telling you, a lot of this stuff is coming down the pike and they're just going to be instituting it and we're seeing it right now globally happening around the world and it's no rabbit hole you don't have to dig too far to actually get to the end of their agenda you can literally go on the wef's website and read this stuff that i'm talking about verbatim and you're literally seeing it happen in society that's what's really going on absolutely insane totally mesmerizing but there you go that's what you've got now getting back to the whole loss of the reserve currency, I'm telling you the majority of folks in the United States that have not really been paying attention too much to this, and some of them don't even wanna hear it, they can't even mentally take it. The way our lifestyle has worked has been due to the petrodollar in a big, big, big way. When that's gone, and so far it's already dead as far as I'm concerned, like I say, it, we just haven't had the funeral. I'm telling you what, it has the, the wave hasn't come in, it hasn't impacted yet, but the tsunami is on the way and it is going to come. It's like having an asteroid some, from space. We know it's going to hit us. It just hasn't hit us yet. And when it hits us, I'm telling you, the impact is going to be absolutely phenomenal. And most folks are not even going to be ready for it. It is going to be devastating. So, hey, if you're hearing this and you've got a little bit that you can get and set it aside, whether it be food, fuel, cash, maybe whatever, or getting into some of these assets to kind of insulate yourself, then, hey, I would be saying it's probably about time that you took some action there and really start to protect yourself. Because I'll tell you what, when you see that happen and you watch hyperinflation come in, the price of things that you think could not go up are just going to absolutely go to obscene levels. And it's really, it's going to make, a, and it's going to cause a lot of people to be in a lot of hurt and a lot of pain. That's what's really probably going to happen. And I'm not, it, it, I, look, nobody wants it. Of course, nobody wants that. But nobody wanted hyperinflation as it is already. Nobody wanted the 2008 and 9 crash where many people were put out of their homes and living out of their cars. Remember that? I sure do. Nobody wanted that either. Nobody wanted the Great Depression, but it came anyway. You cannot do some of the things that these economists have done and print money the way they have and fool around with the economic system the way that they have and not have those consequences. Those are realities, guys. That's what happens. And look at what happened in Venezuela. And that was just very, very recently. And there's a country, one of the, I think it's the fourth largest oil producing country in the world. And yet, look what happened to them. I'm telling you, don't think that it can't happen because it can happen. And unfortunately, the way our politicians and the way these guys have ran this system for all these years, the Federal Reserve and on and on, they've literally created this very system. But don't kid yourself, they're going to come out and want to be the saviors of it all. And they're going to have the, the switches to be flipped but they're gonna let us feel a little bit of that pain first because why? Then we're gonna beg for the switches to be flipped, I'll tell you. <laughs> anyway, guys, that's just how I feel. <laughs> and I got a little bit of a soapbox there, of course. But I'll tell you what, it's Friday. I sure hope you're gonna have a fantastic weekend. And I'll tell you what, guys, we got a great video planned for you later on this evening. And until then, I sure hope you have a good one and take care.